Hello and welcome to another tier list video. Today we are taking a look at the Generation 1 Pokemon. Now I've always been a big Pokemon fan. I loved watching the show as a kid, loved playing the games, and Pokemon Leaf Green is definitely the game that I played the most, which is a Generation 1 Pokemon game. And so I'm pretty familiar with all these Pokemon and uh, just excited to do this list. So obviously there's, you know, a lot of Pokemon on this list, so I'm going to kind of breeze through it. But starting us off, we have Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and Venusaur. Now, I will say uh, Bulbasaur is probably my least favorite of the three starters. I mean, I don't hate him. You know, I, I pick him occasionally in a playthrough, but um, definitely my least favorite of the three. So Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, and Venusaur, I mean, I like them. You know, they're pretty good. Um, but, you know, they just they don't quite have the, uh, the late game power that the other two have. So they're actually going to find themselves in the C tier. Up next, we have Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard. I would say probably the most popular starter for this game would be Charmander. And uh, for pretty good reason. I mean, he's really strong. Uh, obviously, Charizard is really cool. I think Flying Fire is a really cool combo. And overall, I just really don't have anything negative to say about Charmander. Um, he's, he's pretty much tied with Bulbasaur for my favorite starter of all time. So Charmander going to find himself in the S tier along with... Charmeleon and Charizard because I think they all deserve to be up there. Up next we have Squirtle, the other uh, starter of Generation 1. And for me, I mean, it's always a tough call between going with Charmander or Squirtle. Uh, I think they're both really good picks and both super strong. I mean, Blastoise, I mean, look at him. He just looks cool. He's got that huge shell. He's got those tank cannons on. I mean, what's not to love about Blastoise for me? Uh, all three of these Pokemon, Squirtle, Wartortle, and Blastoise, also going to find themselves in the S tier. Up next, we have Caterpie. Um, get into some bug Pokemon here. Uh, Caterpie, Metapod, and Butterfree. Caterpie and Metapod, I mean, it's it's rough. I'm going to be honest. You Pretty much you got String Shot and, and Poison Dart at the beginning. Uh, Caterpie, sorry... You're pretty bad, going to be in the D tier. Metapod, even worse, if you catch a wild Metapod, all they know is Harden. Completely useless, so hard to train, going to be F tier. But Butterfree, I kind of like Butterfree, it looks pretty cool, has some cool moves. Uh, so Butterfree actually going to find himself in the B tier. Up next we have Weedle, Kakuna, and Beedrill. Now, I mean for me, uh, Weedle and Caterpie are pretty similar, same with Kakuna and Metapod. They're going to be in the same tier for the same reasons. Uh, that being said, Beedrill, I love Beedrill, I loved using him as a kid, um, he was pretty much the reason I would catch a Weedle early on, it's just because I loved using Beedrill. I wish he was better because I just think that he's, you know, pretty weak um, in terms of the moves and even just his usefulness in the game. Uh, but I still really love Beedrill and I just think he looks really cool, so Beedrill, gonna find himself in the A tier. Up next we have Pidgey, Pidgeotto, and Pidgeot, um, pretty much the classic flying type Pokemon, I mean... Unless I had a Charizard on my team, I would always have a Pidgeot on my team for the fly. Um, I just think he looks cool, he's pretty useful, and uh, you know, he's he's just one of those classic Pokemon that pretty much everyone has on their team the first time they play, partially because he's, you know, found so early on, but just a pretty solid pick. So uh, Pidgey, Pidgeotto, and Pidgeot going to find themselves in the A tier. Up next, we have Rattata and Raticate. Um, Rattata, funnily enough, I used to call Rattata... I used to put an extra TA in there, so I call him Ratatata. Um, took me a long time to outgrow that, but Rattata, uh, sorry Joey, but your six Rattatas uh, just don't match up. Rattata, pretty useless, gonna be in the D tier. Raticate, he has one good move, as far as I know, and that's Hyper Fang. It's a good move, but that's all he's got, so Raticate, just barely gonna be better in this E tier. Up next, we have Spiro and Pharaoh. Um, honestly, this is kind of like the discount Pidgey line for me. Um, I almost never have him on my team. I just think he's weaker, you know, it doesn't look quite as cool. So, Spearow and Fero both going to find themselves in the D tier. Up next, we have Ekans and Arbok. Uh, Ekans, I think he just looks kind of dumb, kind of useless, doesn't know that many great moves. Going to find himself in the D tier. Arbok does get a little bit better, definitely looks a lot cooler. And so pretty much just for that reason alone, going to find himself in the C tier. Up next, we have Pikachu and Raichu. Now, I mean, Pikachu, how, how can you not put this guy in at least A tier? I mean, he just looks cool. He's fun to use. He's, he's pretty good. He's not the best electric Pokemon, I would say, but he's pretty strong. And Pikachu is like the face of the Pokemon series. So Pikachu and Raichu, both going to find themselves in the A tier. Uh, they would be S tier, but 
I, you know, they're, they're not my favorite and they're not the best, but they deserve to be in at least A tier. Up next, we have Sandshrew and Sand Slash. Um, honestly, some pretty fun Pokemon. I actually like having them on my team because, you know, they're pretty uncommon to include, but they're not the best. Uh, that being said, you know, Sandshrew is a great HM slave. Uh, you know, and for pretty much that reason alone, both Sand Slash or Sandshrew and Sand Slash are going to find themselves in the B tier. Up next, we have the Nidoran and Nidoran lines. Um, honestly, these are both uh, fairly similar in terms of the niches that they fill. There are definitely differences between these. Um, that being said, I'm going to rank them the same because I don't think that the differences are enough to really, um, you know, uh, separate them in the tiers. I think they're both fun to have. I think both Nido Queen and Nido King are some of the coolest looking Pokemon in the game. Um, and I really like having them on my team, and they can learn, like, almost any move in the game. It's actually crazy, so I like having them. They're not the best, but they're fun, so they'll find themselves in the B tier. Um, all six of them will. Up next, we have Clefairy and Clefable. Um, gotta be honest, never really have them on my team. I just don't think that they look very cool. I get that they're pretty good. They're really tanky, and, uh, you know, I think in the later generations now that they have fairy type they have a bit more of an identity but in this game they're just the normal type and they don't really do a whole lot for me so they're going to find themselves in the d tier up next we have vulpix and nine tails honestly a pretty good fire type for me if you're not going with charizard or growlithe i think nine tails is a really good fire type pokemon to include on your team um and honestly they're both pretty solid uh they're not the best but you know i think vulpix and nine tails are solid fire pokemon gonna find themselves in the b tier up next, we have Jigglypuff and Wigglytuff. Um, I gotta say, really cute Pokemon, but kind of like uh, Clefairy and Clefable. They're just normal type in this game. They don't really have much of an identity of their own besides kind of being tanky. Uh, they have a couple good moves, but honestly, they're not the best. But they are definitely cuter than Clefairy and Clefable, in my opinion. So, they'll bring themselves up to the C tier. Up next, we have Zubat and Golbat. Um, honestly, if this game had Crobat, I think this would be a good line, but when Golbat is the best you can get, I'm sorry, but it is, it's, it's pretty rough. Gonna be in the D tier. Not much, not much to say about Zubat or Golbat besides they are pretty garbage in this game. Uh, you definitely need that Crobat evolution to be useful. Up next, we have Oddish, Gloom, and Vileplume. Um, kind of creepy looking Pokemon, honestly. The drool coming from Gloom's mouth. And then the red eyes of Vileplume, kind of scary, honestly. But, uh, you know, Poison Grass, you know, if you don't have a, a Venusaur on your team and you want kind of that same niche, I think this is a pretty good Grass-type Pokemon to go with. Um, not the best, but honestly, pretty good. And I think Vileplume is, is pretty strong, so going to find themselves in the B tier. Up next, we have Paris and Parasect. Um, Paris, honestly, was another Pokemon that I just really liked as a kid. Definitely not very good. Uh, same with Parasect. Um, that being said, Parasect is really creepy because his eyes are completely white, and if you read the Pokemon lore, the reason is because the mushroom has actually taken over his brain, and that's why his eyes are white. Um, so, yeah, kind of creepy, honestly. Um, but Paris and Parasect, pretty useless, honestly. Really don't have a lot of redeeming qualities about them. Gonna find themselves in the D tier. Up next, we have Venonat and Venomoth. Um, honestly... I think butterflies are just better than moths, and, you know, I think Butterfree is better than Venomoth. Uh, maybe not in strength, you could argue, but honestly, in appearance, definitely, and that matters to me, so Venonat and Venomoth can find themselves in the C tier. Up next, we have Diglett and Dugtrio. Honestly, another pretty good ground type. Uh, really fast Pokemon when you level them up, and, you know, if, if you're looking for a ground type Pokemon, I think this is a pretty good one. Um... And, you know, they just they just look kind of cool. They're just these little nubs sticking out of the ground. You know, what's not to like about them? So, Diglett and Dugtrio are going to be in the B tier. Up next, we have Meowth and Persian. Um, again, I've never been a huge fan of normal-type Pokemon. And Meowth, you know, you, you love him in the show. But in the game, he, he's, he's kind of useless. Not the best. Meowth and Persian both can find themselves in the D tier. Up next, we have Psyduck and Golduck. Um, honestly, in the show, absolutely love Psyduck, one of my favorite Pokemon in the show. Uh, just such good comic relief. And then Golduck, in the game, actually a pretty strong pick. It's kind of a pain to go from Psyduck to Golduck, 
But Golduck, I think, is pretty strong. Um, you know, I really like him as a Pokemon. I think he looks cool. I think his typing is cool. So Psyduck, um, you know, he would be a tier lower than Golduck. But for the sheer reason of I love him in the show, uh, Psyduck going to find himself in the B tier. And then Golduck will as well. Up next, we have Mankey and Primeape. Um, honestly, just a Chad fighting Pokemon. Uh, they just look pretty cool. Um, if you want a fighting po type Pokemon on your team, I don't think it's necessary in Gen 1, but I think he's a pretty good choice. Gonna find themselves in the B tier. Up next, we have Growlithe and Arcanine. Um, honestly, I'm pretty sure Arcanine was originally gonna be a legendary Pokemon. This Pokemon is completely busted. So strong when you level him up. And uh, honestly, just so fun. If I don't have Charizard on my team, I usually go for Arcanine. He's just so strong, and he looks so cool, too. Um, Growlithe and Arcanine gonna be in the S tier for me. Up next, we have Poliwag, Poliwhirl, and Poliwrath. Um, honestly, decent water-type Pokemon. You know, if I don't go for Blastoise, I may go for these. I think they're pretty cool. Uh, they don't really feel the best. They're not my favorite to run, but... You know, they're pretty good, so they'll find themselves in the B tier. Up next, we have Abra, Kadabra, and Alakazam. Now, Alakazam is honestly my favorite Pokemon in Gen 1, in the game, um, in the show, maybe not necessarily, but in the game, I mean, I just, I've always loved Abra specifically, and so, you know, Alakazam is also just so strong. He's kind of a little overpowered, I would say, as well, in Gen 1, um, but that's not really why I like him. I just really like him. Uh, in terms of a Pokemon and his move sets, I like Psychic Pokemon, so Abra, Kadabra, and Alakazam going to be in the S tier for me. Up next, we have Machop, Machoke, and Machamp. Um, honestly, Machamp for me is easily one of the coolest looking Pokemon in Gen 1. Such a cool fighting type Pokemon. They can learn really cool moves. Again, if you want fighting type Pokemon on your team in Gen 1, I think this is probably the best one to go for. Um, honestly, all three of these Pokemon are really cool. Going to be in the S tier. Up next, we have Bellsprout, Weepin' Bell, and Victory Bell. And once again, I think these are pretty good, you know, grass poison type Pokemon. If you don't have a Venusaur, you don't have a Vile Plume, I think they're pretty strong. Um, I think Victory Bell looks pretty cool. Bellsprout and Weepin' Bell do feel pretty weak to evolve. Um, that said, once you get to Victory Bell, I think he's pretty strong. Definitely a solid choice. Not my favorite grass type, but always a good one to go for and uh, you know not a lot of people run victory bell so i think he's a pretty fun pokemon to have on your team so they'll find themselves in the b tier up next we have tentacool and tentacruel um this is a pokemon i almost see people never run but honestly i think tentacruel looks really cool um water poison is not the best combination i will say um that being said you know i think he's a pretty fun pokemon to have definitely add some variety and uh honestly he just looks really cool so tentacool Tentacool and Tentacruel, while they're not the best, I think they're pretty fun to have, so they'll find themselves in the B tier as well. Well, uh, that is going to be part one of this list. I will have a part two as well, so stay tuned for that. But uh, let me know your thoughts on these, and uh, hope to see you next time.